explain and compulsion. We will be studying the technicians and what are the causes and what are the reasons behind the compulsion and claim. Let us see what is compulsion first. Compulsion means, for example, recall in your sixth class or in seventh class, you have studied regarding the burning of magnesium rhythm, right? You have done that experiment practically in that class. And what you have observed in that is the magnesium ribbon has been burnt out. That is, in the presence of oxygen, it given the light, heat, right? Therefore, what we can say combustion is combustion is the process that is the chemical process in which there is a reaction with oxygen that is present in atmosphere and generates the heat is said to be as combustion. Simply the reaction of any matter with oxygen and generation of heat and light and warmth is combustion process. Now let us see one activity in order to understand the combustion process. You will be observing it clearly. I have taken three candles. I have taken one chimney, three chimneys and three wooden plates. What I have done is I have placed a lighted candle and I have placed a chimney on it. And I have made some holes such that the air enters. Now the candle is burning in the first experiment. In the second experiment, what I have done is I have removed the holes. Just I have done a partial hole. What? The flame is slightly burning and lightly extinguished. Later, in this you will be seeing some gases, right? Are generated. That the smell generated after the put off of the candle. Now in the third experiment, you will be observing that I have closed tightly the chimney without any gas or any air entering into the candles. Right? There is totally vacuum between the candle. Therefore, you can observe that candle is not at all lighting. It is not giving at all light or heat or anything. But this we can conclude that in the presence of oxygen only, the light that is the goal of candle takes place. And by the absence of oxygen, there is no burning. So combustion process takes place. By this we can conclude that unless and until there is oxygen, the combustion doesn't take place. This is the evidence or practical experiment what we have done and we have concluded about the combustion process. Now let us discuss regarding the combustion and flame. We have studied little introduction of combustion and flame. What is the combustion and how the flame is produced, right? And what is the necessary requirements for the combustion? That is the oxygen which is present in the atmosphere is the essential part for the combustion purpose. Now let us see some examples of combustion that is. For example, let us take a piece of paper, right? When you burn the piece of paper, you will be getting two types of things that is smoke, heat and some gases. These three are the outputs or the results when you burn a piece of paper, right? If you burn a piece of paper, what will be getting? The ash of the paper and the heat produced because of the flame and the smoke and the gases. All these are the results of burning of a piece of paper. From this, what we have to analyze is, after you have burnt a piece of paper, you will be getting these gases. Are these gases are harmful or useful to us. We have to analyze it first. That is, this gas is consists of mostly that is carbon components that is CO2, CO and carbon monoxide gases are present mostly in these gases and minor content of the inner gases are also present but these gases are very very harmful to us and to the atmosphere also. These gases because of the combustion or which is the gases produced because of the vehicles from the vehicles also all these gases are leading to the depletion of the ozone layer, right? Now we will be studying these gases in detail in further. Now let us see other examples how we have to reduce the fire that is what the precautions we have to take when we are caught by the fire that is if at all take suppose there is a minor accident due to the gas burn or anything even the person is dying in suicide right for example they pour the kerosene and oil and they will be bursting their 
themselves, right? Now, during that time, if you observe what the precautions the person has to take during the burns is, whenever there is a fire on a person, whenever, whenever by mistake or anything, if a person can catch up the fire, we have to take a woolen blanket, very, very heavy woolen blanket, and we have to wipe or surround the person's body, and we have to make it into sit or sleep on the ground. That is, we have to round off the person with the blanket. Nothing should be, we should not at all pour the water whenever a person is caught by fire. Please remember that we, have, we should never pour the water. We should wipe them or surround them in the blanket and we have to reduce the fires. Okay. Now let us see another example. That is, uh, for example, let us take a piece of wood. Right, a piece of wood or a piece of coal or charcoal or paper or anything. Whenever you want to burn these objects, that is wood or charcoal, what you will be taking? You will be taking either the paper or kerosene oil in order to burn them with the help of the matchstick, right? Now, why this kerosene oil and paper are acting as a starting substance, starting substance, sorry, starting substances for the sake of burning of wood and charcoal or coal that is because these paper and kerosene are acting as a ignition substances that means these two substances catch the fire easily for low temperatures only that means if you also if you make a matchstick right you, it will be burned for a one strike right if you bring that matchstick near to your paper it will be easily catching the fire when compared to the wood or charcoal, it takes longer time in order to burn, right? That is the difference between this paper and kerosene. They will be catching the fire easily. So, what here, what we want to say is the ignition temperature. The ignition temperature is the temperature that is the lowest temperature where the burning of a piece of paper or kerosene oil takes place. That means any objects catching the fire or burning the burning at low temperatures are said to be as ignition objects and that temperature is said to be as ignition temperature. Please you might ignition temperature is the lowest temperature for the sake of burning of the objects. Now let us see one more thing that is sun. What will we get it from the sun? That is light and heat. These suns light and heat are the production or the result of the nuclear reaction that is a nuclear reaction between the sun's atoms and that therefore will be resulting that light and heat which are very essential for our day to day life purposes. Now we will be seeing that one experiment or small activity what we want to do here is we will be taking the charcoal or let us take a piece of coal right and now this charcoal or piece of coal we will be keeping it in a tama any iron plate, you place it, you place the charcoal on the iron plane or plate. Now we will be seeing that after placing the charcoal, you cover it with the help of a lid. Assume this as an iron plate and I have placed the charcoal here and I am covering it with the help of a lid. Okay, this is the lid plate. After covering it with a lid, what I will be doing is, I will be heating the plane or the plate, that is tower plate with the help of the bulb. Now, after heating, that is the heat is absorbed first by the tower plate. Later it is transferred to the charcoal which is on the ego, right? That means it takes a longer time or more duration in order to heat up and burn. That is why we will be saying that these objects that is coal or wood which is taking a longer time are known as non-ignition objects. Non-ignition objects means they are burnt at higher temperatures. That is the major difference between the ignition substances and non-ignition. The difference is only in the temperature and the burning time that is the duration. Okay, I hope you remember the point and the difference between those two. Now let us see how to control the fire. That is, if you observe, frequently the fire accidents will be observing, right? Either it in home 
or in industrial areas or in surroundings, right? That is what you will be observing that is fire accidents majorly occurs due to gas burns or suicide attempts or any mistakes or miscatching of fires or misleading of fire things, right? And all these how to control whenever there is a major accident that is fire accident, how to control and how to prevent and how to safeguard ourselves and how to prevent and how to protect the lives of the persons who are indulging in the accident. And that are the major steps what we have to take, we will be discussing here right now. And first of all, let us see the term that is known as inflammable substances. Inflammable substances. The term itself is showing that inflammable, that means having less flame, that is having easily catching the fire at less temperatures is known as inflammable substances. I have previously said regarding the term of ignition temperature. What does mean by ignition temperature? The substances such as paper and kerosene oil easily catching up the fire at lower temperatures, right? Now, in the same way, the substances which are catching the which are catching the fire at lower temperatures, I said that is ignition substances and those substances are also called as inflammable substances if at all they catch at very low temperature. Very very low temperature that they are said to be as inflammable substances. For example, let us take a piece of paper, you will be taking a matchstick, right? And it will be catching the fire easily. If at all you keep that piece of paper in a water, take a glass of water and if you keep the piece of paper in the water, if you observe or if you try to make it to burn, it takes a longer time and it probably doesn't have the fire. It doesn't catch the fire, right? That is what the difference between when they are dipped in the water or when an object in the presence of water acts in different way when it is on the side or outer surface of the water. Now, let us see that here what I want to say is let us take a paper cup, right? What you will be taking the water or disposable water glasses or tea glasses, white cups, you will be observing them, right? If you take tea in that, now hot tea, if you pour it in a paper cup, you will be seeing that the heat or heating nature is transferred from the paper cup to the, that is from the tea to the paper cup, right? And if at all you dip this paper cup in water, then the heat again it is transferred from tea to paper cup and paper cup to water. That is known as transformation. And this process of transferring the heat from one, one object to the other is said to be as conduction. That is done by the conduction principle that is transferring of heat from higher temperatures to lower objects. Now, let us see the presence of water. I have previously said this. That is, presence of water, it takes more time. If at all you take uh, wood and paper, same example. Wood takes longer time to burn, while paper takes a single second to burn, right? That is what the difference between these inflammable substances that is acting at very, very low temperature, they are getting to be burned. Now, let us see another term that is example such as petrol, alcohol and LPG. LPG you will be observing when you find petroleum gas, what you will be getting in your cylinder set, household gas, what gas in the cylinder if you get a question that is LPG gas, it is nothing but liquefied petroleum gas and this gas is very very uh, inflammable that is it is catch fire at very very low temperatures even a small spark of a lighter is enough in order to burn the gas so this LPG gas is a very good example for inflammable substances and at the same time petrol and alcohol you will be observing right they also will be getting easily fired at lower temperatures and major examples are paper and LPG gas for inflammable substances and another class we will be learning the steps what to take in order to control and to prevent the catching of fire and how to reduce the fire with the help of the instruments such as fire engines and how precautions such as what we have to do and for whom we have to call 